Is South Carolina on the verge of landing the double? Or even the triple like LSU did last year? What is the double and what is the triple? Well, first, the double is a championship and number one recruiting class. The triple, which LSU landed last year, is the championship number one recruiting class, which was headed by Del Rosario and Williams, and as well, winning the transfer portal when they signed HVL and Anissa Morrow. Before we start, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing to the channel and give the video a like. All right, let's get into this. Now, first, some South Carolina fans might argue they won the triple last year as they had the best team in women's college basketball. They did pretty damn good with recruiting by getting full Wiley, and they're pretty happy with their transfer portal score of Tahina Pow Pow, who they would put against LSU's transfer any day or transfers any day of the week. But they're wrong because they didn't win the championship. You've got to put the cherry on the Sunday. And they had an amazing team, but they did not finish it off. Thanks to Miss Caitlin Clark. But this year is a new year. And once again, they are looking like they will go into the tournament undefeated. Sorry, South Carolina fans. I probably just guaranteed you a loss against Tennessee or in the SEC tournament. Sorry. But this team is looking formidable as they have an inside and outside game. Unlike last year's team, whose outside deficiencies were highlighted by a cruel wave-off by Caitlin Clark. But super transfer, Tahina Pow Pow has cured that problem. And then once again, they have just reloaded due to all their great recruiting throughout the years. And they are lined up once again to bring in the number one recruiting class in 24-25. Their class is currently sitting behind USC, who have landed five top 100 prospects. Now South Carolina only has three recruits, but it's a good one. So number two, Joyce Edwards, number 12, Madison McDaniel, and number 26, Post Adele Tack. And Don Staley was all lined up on Sunday to put the cherry on top of this recruiting class by getting number one recruit Sarah Strong to commit to South Carolina. Two days earlier, Staley and her staff had traveled to Sanford, North Carolina to watch Strong play in her senior night at Grace Christian School. And Strong put on another show going for 19 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, helping her team improve to a 27-0 and record. And then Sarah Strong came to South Carolina and got to watch them put a beat down on UConn. And during the game, the crowd broke out into a We Want Sarah, We Want Sarah chant. Now, this was the same tactic that they used on Joyce Edwards, and she committed to signing to them after the game as well. They had Asia Wilson talk to her at halftime and spruiked the value of going to South Carolina and being coached by Staley. And sure enough, she committed, like I said, after the game. But with Sarah Strong, I tell you what, I don't want to play poker with her as she's holding her cards very close and giving nothing away. Her only hint was UConn and South Carolina have shown interest in me. As well, if I'm buying a car or a house, I might have Sarah Strong represent me because that's pretty impressive as that's a nice little closer getting the whole stadium to chant your name, but she didn't feel the pressure and hasn't committed to anybody or anything. Now, after the game, Don Staley was a bit disappointed that South Carolina was unable to close the deal saying, I thought I was going to have a welcome home, but not yet. Welcome home is code for South Carolina when they sign a recruit. But I guess if you're the number one recruit in women's college basketball, you do not need to be in a rush because everybody's going to hold a roster spot open for you. Now, usually on these videos about recruiting, I do the joke of I don't know what my teenage daughters are doing, so how the heck can I know what Sarah Strong is doing? which is true, but really I think this choice boils down to one thing, which is how important is it to play big minutes her freshman year, i.e. like Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo and Michaela Williams 
or is she willing to sort of bide her time like Malaysia Full Wiley, who obviously could be starting and getting 25 to 35 minutes on other teams, but is content to bide her time the South Carolina way. If it is the latter, then South Carolina is obviously the go as they are the class program and women's college basketball. If it's not that and minutes are the main consideration, then obviously you would think the line of contenders would be UConn, North Carolina State, because daddy goes there, and LSU, as she would definitely get playing time there as well. One other consideration is injury. So if injury is a concern, I wonder if her dad steers her away from UConn. As you are aware, they have had nightmare run of injuries which I don't feel those are related one to another because they've all been different sort of injuries. But the one thing that is undeniable is that the depth that South Carolina has allows them to limit their players' minutes, which limits their risk to injuries. For example, if you look at South Carolina's 2024-25 class, their number 26 recruit, Adele Tack, She has suffered two injuries in high school. One was a fractured foot, which took her out for almost a year. And then following that, her senior year, she also suffered a dislocated patella. So she is actually left high school early, and she is enrolled at South Carolina for the spring semester this year to allow her to help recover from those injuries. And because of her injury history and the depth that South Carolina has it is the perfect location for her as they will be able to limit her minutes carefully her freshman year as well as throughout the course of her career as Ashlyn Watkins is there Sanaya Fagan Cardoso might even come back they are just so loaded and continue to reload with recruiting if you have any sort of injury concern or if you are concerned about injuries then South Carolina is a no-brainer in terms of where you might want to go. I imagine North Carolina State is selling her on the idea, hey, be like Juju, build back this program. It will be you and you will be celebrated for bringing this program to prominence, much like that. I would suggest UConn's probably doing the same thing. Hey, do you want to be part of the bringing UConn back versus just being another player in the South Carolina cog of greatness? At the same time, I imagine Don Staley is talking to her mom, Allison Feaster, who she played with in the WNBA and saying, send your daughter here. I'll take care of her as well. I've got no doubt Gary Reedus is still trying to get in. As Sarah Strong mentioned in another article that he was one of the most interesting recruiters to talk to. But right now, it is all just a guess as Sarah Strong is a heck of a poker player and nobody's going to pressure her into buying the car or the undercoating for the car. My guess is NC State, but I probably just jinxed NC State. Sorry, NC State. Anyway, let me know where you think she is going, and when do you think she'll commit? Do you think we'll get a commitment before the end of February, or will it be in March prior to the tournament? Comments, boys, and welcome. Subscribe. Give it a like. Good night.